Welcome back to Zip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to bring you our final Baltimore Ravens, Dallas Cowboys preview for the upcoming game Sunday at 425 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Cowboy Stadium in Dallas, Texas. So first of all, I want to welcome all of you back and I want to thank all of the Patreon members, all of the members in general, all of the new subs, all of the old subs for helping me reach 10K. That's a milestone that I had kind of set that I didn't think was possible for me. But now that it is possible, I just want to keep pushing and pushing that number as far as I can to uh, help grow this platform. So anything you guys can do to help share this platform, I would greatly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's dive into our uh, preview of the Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Ravens matchup. But before we get into that, the last time the Cowboys and the Ravens played, it was in Baltimore, Maryland in 2002. No, it was in 2000. The Baltimore Ravens won that game 34-17. It was on a Tuesday. Lamar had two passing TDs and 94 yards rushing and another TD also. I think he was coming back from a spell with COVID at that time. So that was when all the schedule was funky and people were, you know, they were changing games around to try to help teams that were dealing with, you know, the issue and whatnot. But that was a funky time during the NFL and they made it work. They made it work and we didn't miss out on football, you know, because of the pandemic. So they, they made it work and it was crazy what had happened. Let's start with some defensive numbers for the Dallas Cowboys. And this is what they've given up so far this year. They rank 20th in the NFL, 331 yards per game given up. They're 30th in points per game given up. 30.5. They're 17th in passing yards per game given up, 189.5. And they're 21st in rush yards given up, 141.5. Now, we'll talk about that main guy on the front level, uh, you know, in a minute. But um, last year they played a bunch of safeties at, at linebacker, and you can see kind of one of those guys in the picture, Damone Clark. But they actually got real linebackers now. They got uh, Eric Kendricks they brought in. Uh, Overshone is a guy that they really like. And so they actually have legit linebackers, you know, there now. Uh, Diggs is back, which is, you know, a guy that they missed last year. Um, we know what Diggs can do, uh, tremendous ball skills, but he also has a tendency to to give up plays too. But Deron Bland is out. Deron Bland was Mr. Pick 6, had a bunch of pick 6s last year. He won't be playing this game. He's still out. So, um. And their safety room is, is is okay. Some of those those guys that they had playing linebackers are now like backup safety, so their safety room is kind of deep. But um, the main guys are up front. You know, they got a, a bunch of guys that can throw at you up front on top of that beast that we'll talk about here in a little bit. But this is what they've given up so far you know, as a defense. All right, so the guy I mentioned as that guy, we all know, is Michael Parsons and so far this year hadn't done anything crazy uh, seven tackles one sack 12 pressures but he has lined up in four different positions so far uh, 92 snaps at the edge which is where he normally is 10 snaps at defensive tackle which I think if they line him up more there and he has to go against guards especially with what we've been throwing out there at guard he could be dangerous could be really really dangerous especially put him and d-law on the same side and you can't really help off of d-law man but i don't work for them I don't, well i don't work for the ravens either but i don't want to put no ideas in their head uh three snaps at linebacker and one snap in the slot um we faced week two was max who we faced week one? That, that feel like a year ago. Oh, the Chiefs. Uh, Chris Jones. Week one was Chris Jones. Micah 
may be the most athletic guy we faced up front so far. And not the and I ain't saying he could be better than Chris Jones. I do think he's better than Max. And we better throw a lot of resources at, at Michael Parsons. Like like in this picture you see on on the screen, they got two guys blocking Michael, Taysom Hill and, and I think that's Trevor Penning. Um and they leaving ninety seven unblocked. <laughs> I don't too much blame him because <laughs> Michael Parsons is, is the definition of game wrecker, the definition of it. And he don't have the numbers to kind of put it up there yet, but don't block him and don't pay attention to him and, and treat him like you did Devontae as just a guy and see, see what happens. See what happens. A few more things about Michael. Since the start of last season, Michael Parsons has generated a league leading 21% pressure rate. Parsons has aligned on the left side of the defensive line in 56 of his 106 total snaps this season. Right guard Daniel Farlele, I don't know if he's going to be there. John has hinted as there are going to be some changes, but we'll see come Sunday. Has allowed an 11.2% pressure rate, ranking seventh highest at the position. Pat McCarry has held down, has held his own at the right tackle, allowing just four pressures on 63 pass blocking snaps. But he's been rotating with Rooker Roger Rosengarten. Rosengarten has allowed as many pressures as McCarry, but on 37 fewer pass blocking snaps, resulting in the third highest pressure rate allowed among right tackles. That the bottom half of that stat is kind of misleading because we know Rosengarten hadn't played nearly as many snaps as McCarry. Rosengarten has looked a lot better than McCarry in pass blocking snaps. So sometimes numbers can be misleading, but I know. With my eye test, Rosengardner has looked a lot better in pass blocking reps than McCarry. And, you know, numbers are numbers, but my eyes tell me that Rosengardner is a lot better pass blocker than McCarry. It is what it is. All right, let's jump to the other side of the ball and talk about the Cowboys offense a little bit. Uh, statistically, they're 18th in total yards. That's uh, 309 yards per game ninth in passing yards that's 224 passing yards per game 26 in rushing yards per game 85 only 85 rushing yards per game and then seventh in points per game is 26 points per game so it's not bad on points per game but but they don't run the ball a lot don't pass it like they did in previous years well last year because they threw it around the yard last year but that don't mean they don't have the capability of doing it it's only a two-game sample size, and um, we're 30 seconds in pass defense. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. We're first in rushing defense, but we're 30 seconds in pass defense. So just keep that in mind. But we'll talk about ways we can exploit the different things. Let's talk about you know some of their offensive stars individually right here. Okay, let's start with Dak Prescott. He's 12th in passing yards with 472. And it's I got PG up there for per game, but that's not per game. That's 472 total for the two games that they've played. So that's the user error on me. So charge that to me messing up the graphic. Uh, with three touchdowns and two interceptions, his average time to throw has only been 2.79 seconds. 2.79 seconds. Keep that in mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back to that in a minute. His average time to throw this year, and you can see um, Demario getting getting in on him last week right there, has only been 2.79 per second. Highlight that in your notes. We're going to circle back to that. Uh, but he did finish second to Lamar in MVP voting in 2023. He had a, him and CD had an amazing uh, 2023 last year, and, you know, Cowboy faithful, they were up in arms when he lost to Lamar, but tough titty. Be all right. All right, Dak has had trouble finding open receivers past the sticks this season as 13 of his 30 attempts past the sticks have been into tight windows, 43%. That's second highest in the NFL. Prescott has recorded a negative six completion percentage over expected on such attempts through two games this season after recording a positive 8.9% on such attempts in 2023, the second highest rate in the NFL. The Ravens defense has allowed 70 Point eight percent of opposing pass targets targeted pass the sticks to be completed this season. The second highest in the NFL. That contributes to that 
32nd ranked so far this season. Now, I know it's early in the season, but and we're ranked 32nd, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that gets better. Like, it has to get better because our front four is too good for us to be 32nd. I mean, our DBs are too good for us to continue to be 32nd in the league. Some, something has to mesh and get better. Something. Something. It, it's amazing to be first and 32nd. That's You can't be that good versus the run and be that good versus the pass. You'd have to have the, the monsters up front and then, like, me and four of my friends on the back end to be that bad in defense. That I digress. Let's keep going. Now, now, Dak hasn't been great this year. Dak Prescott did not complete any of his three attempts when and threw an interception when targeting C.D. Lamb on vertical routes in week two versus the Saints. Now, the Saints kicked their butt. The Saints just straight up kicked their butt, beat the dog crap out of them. Prescott and Lamb combined for 26 completions and 628 yards on vertical routes last season. And remember, I told you both of them had amazing years last year. They were on my fantasy team, and I won my league because of those two guys both which were second among QB receiver duos. The Ravens defense is one of two teams with the Bengals with two interceptions on vertical routes this season. Last season, the Ravens allowed 31.4 completion percentage on such routes, which was the second lowest in NFL. Now, I think one of those interceptions we have on vertical routes is Roquan's. Um, they've, somebody, I think, who was it, ran the seam route, and it didn't quite get there. We got pressure on the QB, and Roquan got the interception. I think it was versus Pat. I think. Don't quote me on that. But I just know Roquan got interception on a vertical route. Another thing about Dak. Dak has been aggressive when not under pressure this season, averaging the fifth most air yards per attempt, 8.2, but the seventh fewest yards per attempt, 5.8. Only AR and Trevor Lawrence have the larger decrease in air yards per attempt versus yards per attempt when not under pressure than Prescott. Prescott has completed 8 of 15 such passes for 86 yards and an interception when targeting C.D. Lamb this season. After totaling just one interception on 148 such attempts of C.D. Lamb in all of 2023. The Ravens defense has allowed 8.9 yards per attempt when failing to generate pressure this season. The fourth most in the NFL. Again, contributing to that 32nd rank. Something has to give. It got to. It's, we can't keep doing the same things and expecting I, I think a lot of it has to do with the free releases man we we but no i take that back i take that back the communication the communication because people are going motion and then we'll allow those free releases as i showed you guys in the travis kelsey video and i also showed you guys in the Devonte adams video they'll go in motion and then we'll switch guys and move guys and then Devontae and Kelsey got free releases, and they were just candy from a baby. I could have completed some of those passes because those guys were that wide open. All right, let's move on to the, the Cowboys run game. The Cowboys run game has not been very good so far this year. Uh, Rico Dowdle, who a lot of you probably never heard of before, is technically their number one back. He's tied with Zeke for 56 rushing, uh, rushing yards this year. Uh, Zeke has 15 attempts. No, Zeke has 16 attempts. Rico has 15. Uh, Zeke has a touchdown. Rico don't. Uh, Zeke has 3.5 yards per carry. Rico has 3.7. Um, they haven't ran the ball very well at all in the first two games. A at all. They got, what's that, 56 and 56. That's 112 plus another 25. That's 137. They have 137 yards total in two games rushing. And both are under 4.7 yards per carry. So, and it gets, they ain't running the ball well either. We running the better than them, but they ain't running the well at, 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 at all. And at least we got a we got a premier back. They don't. <laughs> they, they 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 recycle Zeke. Got Rico in there, and um, got Deuce Vaughn too. But um, I think Deuce Vaughn is the the back with the other yardage. Let me see real quick. No, Deuce Vaughn don't have any yardage. The the guy with the other guy with the twenty five yards is C D Lamb. So. They, they ain't running the ball with a flip. They're going to run it with Zeke, Rico, and probably do some kind of reverses and stuff like that or speed sweeps with C.D. Lamb. They, you, we should still be number one in rushing after this game's over with. I'm just leaving it at that. All right. The main weapon, 
they have on offense. C.D. Lamb. Mr. Draft Day Phone Snatcher. Mr. Hold Out Till You Give Me My Contract. And all those names are warranted because this dude is, he's hes one of them ones. He's one of them ones. Uh, route runner, speedster, uh, do it from the slot, do it outside, do it across the middle. He, he can do it all. Uh, so far this year, 17 targets, nine receptions. Uh, he's fifth in the league with 151 yards. He only has one touchdown. Only thing is, he's only averaging 1.9 yards of separation on his routes in 2024. That's not a lot. But in NFL, you don't have to be very very open if you got an accurate QB. Sometimes that's accurate. Sometimes he's not. Uh, in 2023, Lamb finished with 119 catches, 1,799 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Extremely, extremely high production. Uh, a little bit more about CD. Uh, CD Lamb has totaled just 43 yards across 37 routes run from the slot this season. That's 1.2 yards per route it's not a lot last season lamb averaged 2.7 yards per route run from the slot that's double that's double and that don't seem like a lot of numbers but when you average that out over the course of a season 500 could turn into a thousand so you know it don't seem like a lot but it, but it is the most of any wide receiver to log 150 such see like i just said that you take that 150 routes that's 300 yards if, if you just do it just like that Lamb also became the first player in the next-gen stats era to lead the NFL in yards from the slot in consecutive seasons in 2022 and 2023. The Ravens' defense has allowed a 68.4% success rate on opposing targets in the slot, the second highest in the NFL, only behind the commanders at 82.4. Again, ranked 32nd in the NFL. But I, I, I do think it's going to change, and I don't think it's going to drastically change this game. I think it's slowly going to change once the communication gets better. I, I I do. I do. The good thing about this is, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to jinx us. I'm not going to jinx us. I'm not going to jinx us. <laughs> not going to jinx us. Not today. I had a thought, but if I say it, I don't want to have the announcer. And I know I'm not an announcer. And like, like Vach taught me this week, I'm just a guy with a camera and a mic. So I ain't going to say that. All right, so now let's get to the point on ways that I think we can beat them and how I think we can beat them and be effective on both sides of the ball. So defensively, defensively, they're starting two rookies. Uh, they have a, a rookie center, Cooper Bibby, from uh, Kansas State. Um, you know, I think we could take advantage of him with um, Matt BK, especially Michael Pierce when we put him at nose. And, and Travis Jones, they they can take advantage of, of Cooper Bebe and, and and do what they need to do and, and get pressure on him. I really think they can win, but I think the 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 real advantage we have is the guy that I have on the screen right here, Tyler Guyton. He is their starting left tackle. Uh, he's allowed five pressures for the second game in a row. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, the first game was Miles Garrett. Second game was Chase Young. Miles Garrett, I understand. Chase was one of them ones, but he ain't hadn't lived up to, you know, all the hype coming out of, of college. And he's with the Saints now, so. And Chase is no slouch, but still. I think just like we should have done versus the Chiefs, we should have threw all of our best resources at Kingsley, uh, Sodom Adair. We didn't. I think we should throw every trick of the trade we got at Tyler Guyton. And get after Dak. Put pressure on Dak. Make him get rid of the ball. Make him throw to people other than C.D. Lamb. And cover the tight end because tight ends have went to work on us this week. Uh, I mean, not this week, this year. Jason Kelsey week one. Um, Brock Bowers week two, nine for nine. We didn't force an incompletion on Brock Bowers. So make sure C.D. Lamb's covered. Make sure the tight end's in check. And then if, if somebody else beat us, so be it. So be it. But definitely, definitely get after Tyler Guyton. Get after Cooper Bibby. That's the way we defensively we can stop the run and generate pressure to come off of that 32nd ranked um, deep, a pass defense that we have. That's how I think we can 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 beat them and, and, and give them fits defensively. 
Offensively, I think the key is simple. Run zone concepts. Run zone concepts. No matter who's out there, run zone concepts. I charted these runs from Alvin Kamara last week. Alvin Kamara had 20 rushes, 115 yards, and a touchdown. 19 of Alvin Kamara's runs were of the outside and inside zone variety. He had one counter. That was one counter in, in the mix. They ran outside or inside zone and had amazing success. Amazing success. Look at that. I don't understand why we can't have that same success. Derrick Henry has been great at it for however long he's been in the league. Look at the toss. Derrick Henry can find gaps. We can get we can move people. We have agile runners. So let's 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 play devil's advocate. Let's let's say the same starting five are out there. Let's just say it's Macari, Falele, um, Linda Baum, Voorhees, and, and Ronnie. And we just think about the, the personnel and, and how they are built. Ronnie. More of a finesse guy at a finesse guy at this age. And when I say finesse, that's not calling him soft. That's that's no insult. Voorhees. Voorhees is a power guy, but he can move. But right now he's he's more he's more of a mover until he gets his technique right. Linda Baum, one of the best zone blockers we've ever seen. Falele, definitely not a power guy. He he can get his he can get in front of people. He's a hat on a hat guy. He's not a move. He's not a power guy. He's not an in space guy. Rosengard. I'm a, not sorry. Rosengard. I want Rosengard to be that so bad. I guess Macari, not a power guy. You have no power guys, with the exception of maybe Voorhees, on that front line. So why are we running power counter stuff, gap stuff that that needs to be? You need power guys to move people. It, to me, it just doesn't make sense. And I know you need to have some of that in you. That's the one counter right there. I, I know you need to have that in your repertoire, you know, to give some some change-ups. But your bread and butter need to be zone concepts because that's what you got up front. Don't make it hard. Don't make it hard. And all the zones ain't going to hit. They're going to hit for two. They're going to hit for four. They're going to hit for one. Maybe some negatives. When them linebackers get overzealous and, and, and choose the wrong gap or overshoot a gap and Derrick Henry hit a cutback, he going to hit his head on that yellow goal post. And then when he get in the secondary, see how they tackle Alvin Kamara? They ain't going to tackle Derrick Henry like that because he's going to choke slam him into the shadow realm. We already seen one start to happen last week. We already seen one start to happen last week. So let's – oh, Alvin Kamara had two touchdowns. Let's, let's use the guys we got. With what they best at, and let's go get this victory, man. Let's get up. Let's get off of this zero and whatever. And one and two looks a lot better than zero and three. And zero and three, some stuff gonna have to happen. It's just like that. Zero and three, some stuff gonna have to happen. So um, I appreciate you guys for coming out, man. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. This is the final video before the game. Make sure you come to the watch party uh, tomorrow at four twenty-five. Uh, stay for the call-in show after that game. And um, let's have a blast tomorrow, man. I appreciate everybody for helping this channel grow. I'm greatly, greatly humble for reaching the 10K mark, man. And again, uh, the motto over here is FTMF, film, damn more film. Uh, merch is here. So if you want to, you know, get some of that, make sure you click that link in the bio. And I'll see you all the next time, man. Peace and love.